Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about cardio version. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. What do we mean by cardio version? Cardio version is a medical procedure that converts irregular heartbeats to a regular heart rhythm. Cardioversion is the delivery of a shock that is synchronized with the patient's cardiac rhythm and that is where it differs from defibrillation. In synchronized cardioversion, defibrillator is set to synchronize with the ECG and here the timing when the shock is given will be during ventricular depolarization. And this ventricular depolarization is reflected by QRS complex in the ECG. The reason why the shock is given during ventricular depolarization is to prevent ventricular fibrillation caused by delivering shock during vulnerable period of repolarization. Coming to types of cardioversion, there are two types, electrical cardioversion and chemical cardioversion. We will be discussing about electrical cardioversion in detail and now let's have a glimpse on chemical cardioversion. Chemical cardioversion refers to taking antiarrhythmia medications to restore the heart's rhythm to normal. Such medications work by altering the heart's electrical properties to suppress the abnormal heart rhythms and restore a normal rhythm. When chemical cardioversion goes unsuccessful, then electrical cardioversion will be the choice. Next, indications of cardioversion. Supraventricular tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, ventricular tachycardia with a pulse. Contraindications for cardioversion includes arrhythmias due to digitalis toxicity, sinus tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation. Coming to the complications of cardioversion, this includes chest wall burns, shock of a healthcare worker, myocardial tissue injury. Let's discuss how cardioversion differs from defibrillation. Cardioversion is an elective procedure whereas defibrillation is an emergency life-saving procedure. In cardioversion, synchronized shock is delivered during ventricular depolarization whereas in defibrillation, unsynchronized shock is delivered. In cardioversion, low energy shock is delivered which ranges between 50 to 300 joules and this depends on the indications, whereas in defibrillation, a high energy shock is delivered. In cardioversion, there is delay in delivering shock because the shock is given only during ventricular depolarization, whereas in defibrillation, there is no delay in delivering shock. In cardioversion, anticoagulation is needed, whereas in defibrillation, there is no anticoagulation needed. Cardioversion is indicated for most of the arrhythmias except ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation whereas defibrillation is indicated for ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. Next comes the equipments needed for cardioversion procedure. This includes defibrillator, defibrillator pads, cardiac monitor with pulse oximeter and blood pressure cuff, intubation kit, emergency medications, Oxygen and suction source, conductive gel, bag valve mask, prescribed medication as ordered. Cardioversion procedure. Explain the procedure. Obtain the consent where the physician who is going to perform the cardioversion procedure should get the consent. And nurses need to make sure that the consent is obtained. NBM for 6 to 12 hours before the procedure. Withhold digoxin 48 hours before the procedure. Assess the hemodynamic stability of the patient. That is, rule out hypotension, chest pain, altered mental status, shortness of breath, shock or other conditions which may be related to tachycardia. Obtain a 12-lead ECG which serves as a baseline. Make sure that the patient has a patent IV line. Connect the patient with pulse oximeter. Administer oxygen with nasal cannula. Administer sedation. Conscious sedation should be used for the patient and commonly used injections are injection fentanyl, ethomidate, midas, etc. Next, 
Attach the defibrillator pads or paddles in the anterior to posterior position or under the right clavicle and apex of the heart. First comes anterior lateral electrode position. The anterior electrode is placed in the right parasternal area in the mid-clavicular line. The lateral electrode is placed with the center of the electrode in the left mid-axillary line in level with the V6 ECG electrode. Next, anterior posterior position of the electrodes. The anterior electrode is placed in the left parasternal area that is the precordium. The posterior electrode is placed in the left lower scapular region with the electrode edge left to the spinal column. Make sure before placing the paddles, conductive gel is applied to the paddles or attach gel pads to the chest wall. Next, turn on the defibrillator, select proper energy level, activate the synchronized mode, check whether the machine is correctly sensing the R wave, push the charge button on the defibrillator and allow it to charge. Call all clear three times, that is, before pressing the discharge button, call clear three times. As clear as call the first time, ensure that you are not touching the patient, bed or equipment. As clear is call the second time, ensure that no one is touching the bed, the patient or equipment. And as clear as call the third time, perform a final visual check to ensure you and everyone else are clear of patient and anything touching the patient. Next, depress the paddles firmly against the chest. The machine will hold the charge until it senses the R wave, so there is a delay in the shock delivered. Administer the shock and observe and record the rhythm. The electrocardiogram recorder should be on and obtain the rhythm strip. If the arrhythmia is not corrected, repeat the procedure using the next energy level. If normal rhythm is restored, place the patient in appropriate position to maintain airway patency using recovery position if necessary. Clean the conductive gel and check the patient's chest for burns. Monitor and record the patient's status such as vital signs, level of consciousness, airway patency, and saturation level. If the patient's cardiac rhythm changes to ventricular fibrillation, change the mode from synchronized to defibrillation and then defibrillate the patient. The procedure causes immediate depolarization, interrupting re-entry circuits that is abnormal impulse conduction that occurs when cardiac tissue is activated two or more times, causing re-entry arrhythmias, and allowing the sinoatrial node to resume control. This graph clearly shows atrial fibrillation where cardioversion is given, thereby achieving a normal heart rhythm. So here you go with cardioversion. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it, and subscribe it. And do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.